Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And this is the series where I'm going from Earth to Mars with the goal of landing on Phobos. Hadn't really given any consideration to an atmospheric breaking at Mars in the last video. I thought about that for a second, but since I'm using a vessel that I'm not super comfortable with, I would probably, I'm sure, I would probably melt the thing a few times. So I don't think I'm gonna mess with any of that. I'm just gonna get out uh, to the orbit of Mars and use the full power of the main engines to circularize but as we're going forward through space, I'm trying to do these mid-course corrections to get us lined up uh, so that we can hopefully um, arrive at Phobos, you know, being reasonably fuel efficient, at least as much as I can be, given the fact that I really didn't do a lot of planning. I did almost no planning for fuel efficiency on this one. And we didn't take into account uh, the arrival inclination at Mars when we were sitting on Earth. So a, a full proper plan for this type of mission would probably involve, you know, it would, it would definitely involve a lot more planning and we didn't do that. So we're not going to be as fuel efficient as we would like. But on the other hand, we're not trying to just waste fuel either. All that said, let's switch camera views here and jump back into it. So let me unpause. And we did a mid course correction last video. So let's bring up, Let's bring up orbit now. We've already referenced Mars, so let's just start cutting down our time. So let's go to where PET is 4M, and we're gonna warp time forward at full blast. And I'm listening for any buzzing sounds that would indicate that we've burned through any of our modules so that we can dump them out into space, uh, like locks. We don't have any fuel modules left. All those were spent. All those have been spent already. And if we go forward on this side and view our encounter, we can kind of keep an eye on things. But again, we're going to go to 4M before we try to make another mid course. And then 2M, and then 1M, and so on. So we're 5.0, so a bit longer. We're at, we are at maximum time warp. So we're getting there as quickly as we can. There's 4.5, so we're almost there. And these things have not changed too much, but I'm hoping that um, just by being at a, at a different position around the sun, essentially, that we can maybe dial in our inclination a little bit closer to what we want. Because if Phobos is our target, we need an inclination of, uh, you know, essentially equatorial, really close to zero. So let's see if we can improve this inclination at Mars now, and we'll we'll start with guesswork. So let's try prograde. That's not doing what I want. So nine takes inclination closer in the direction we're trying to get in, up to a point. Again, we're we seem to be stuck around this 15 degree. Let's try. Um, so that was. Six, six and nine. So let's try one and three. So yeah, that's just dancing back and forth between 14.94 and up and down, eight and two. And yeah, so hmm, we, we seem to be locked in at this 14.94. So we may have to do like a plane change. Uh, let's not worry about that right now. So let's warp time forward until we're at 2M and see if things have improved at all. So there's 3.5, got a little bit to go. Uh, minimum altitude at Mars seems to be getting closer to the planet. So there's 2.5, so we're almost there. And 2.1, and let's go with that. So more or less 2M. And once again, let's uh, let's guess. So starting with prograde and 14.94. So uh, one and three, not helping. And eight and two, not helping. So we're we seem to be. Yeah, we seem to be. We we are where we are. I guess one thing I can do though is as we start getting a little bit closer, 
I can maybe try to dial in our eventual altitude at that number, you know, somewhere between 5.8, uh, let's call it 5.9, and 6.1. So with uh, inward outward, so it looks like this direction is bringing the altitude closer to that direction. And we'll go, we'll go with that for now, and then maybe try to go ahead and correct that inclination a little bit. Wrong direction. And it looks like, again, 14.94, something like that is as good as we're getting. So we're done with that. And now we'll warp time forward till we're at 1M. So here we go. 1.8, 1.7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and one and there we are okay so let's uh, try again so six it's not helping uh, three not helping not helping and eight and two not helping okay hmm let's let's get how far away? So let, let's go forward now to 500k. And again, the closer we get, the faster our numbers go by, so we want to watch our time warp. Okay, we're now starting to feel Mars just ever so slightly. And there we are. Let me actually, just out of curiosity, where is Mars? So that's the ecliptic, so it should be right there it is. So we're not super far away now. So if I bring the vessel over, we should be able to see our target. Just waiting for the vessel to come down. Let me actually bring this back up so I can see the lines. Because I always feel like I'm pointed in the direction I should be much earlier than I actually am. Like, I need to continue rotating for a while. Like, I would have thought that I was already there quite a while ago. So there's our target. So back to real time. And rotate around. And back to real time. Kill rotation. Turn off the lines. Okay. Now... Now we definitely, I think it's definitely time that we need to start figuring out how we're going to do, how we're going to get to Phobos. Not even sure I know how to do this, to be honest. Let me think. So I think we just need to select our target here. So let me see. Demos, yeah, that's the one on the outside, and Phobos is the one on the inside. Alright, so let's go to, let's go back on the side, let's bring up maneuver mode, turn on maneuver mode and start trying to figure out how we're going to make this work. So I can't see very well over here, so while I'm in view setup, let me go to scale to view and zoom in. That should make things a little bit easier. I'd kind of rather see the... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to make this work. So let's start experimenting with our variables such that we can bring the closest approach essentially to zero. A couple kilometers, something like that. We want to be pretty close to it. It's, it's essentially like trying to rendezvous with a satellite. It's just a big satellite. All right, prograde go fine so that I don't think is what I want to do so let's actually just reset prograde for now and let's go to okay so first of all date so 16 8 so 16 9 2 is where we are right now let's give ourselves time to set this up so something like that now outward So that is not 
let me change the graph projection here. Uh, probably not edge on, maybe focus. And so that's not doing what makes sense to me. So let's go the other way. Let's actually reset that for now. And let's try plane change for starters. And let's go to super. Mm. This is going to be tricky. Update every time we pass that variable. So, so this is where this is where Phobos is at right now. Obviously, this is the orbit of Phobos around Mars. Obviously, this is Mars. And this hypothetical is where Phobos will be by the time when we get there. So we, the big thing here is time. It, when, so this will be our orbit coming in. And we want Phobos to be over here. So we need to either speed up or slow down. Let's start by... Let's uh, let's slow down. Let me see my no my encounter velocity is going up. Let's go the other way for now. Let's go with something like that, and then switch variables over to outward, for example, and then. That's okay. So let's go with that. And then plane change around. Something like that. And I'm just gonna have to go through these variables until you know the closest approach is down. A lot of guesswork involved here. I don't want to start this over, but let me just keep going forward for a moment. Okay, so that's helping my closest approach. And it's bringing down the encounter velocity. So let's keep that there for now. Let's back up to prograde and go to a super. Let's go to ultra. So that's still helping the closest approach, but it's now raising the encounter velocity. So let's look at outward. Let's go to a finer setting. So let's go to a finer setting yet. Let's actually go back. So I... so just be patient with me while I try to dial these numbers in. And effectively, essentially, I think everybody can understand what I'm trying to accomplish here try to bring the closest approach down but I also want to keep an eye on encounter velocity the lower the encounter velocity the less fuel I'll have to burn um, the better approach to this again would be coming in burning off a bunch of velocity using the atmosphere of Mars which we could do and I do have a safe point roughly around the spot so I might actually try that like in an alternate version but I think for the main version of this flight, I want to, okay, encounter coming down, encounter velocity coming down, close approach coming down, I think we got it. So we should be able to view the encounter now. Why am I not, do I have to go forward? Oh, there we are. Okay, so we're not quite close enough to see what's happening. So let's go down to an ultra setting here and So somewhere around there, we're hitting kind of the spot where we're not getting any more benefit out of that variable. Update every time we pass. Prograde, let's go ultra, and that's the wrong way. So now I feel like this is the point where things are going to get fiddly. Uh, 
and we're getting actually really close. We can probably see the encounter now. Nope. All right, so we're there. So let's go change plane. And that's helping to a point outward and outwards helping bring down our approach to a point but let's keep what we have there even though we overshot a little bit because I think usually the way it works is some other variable will bring you in even tighter so that's got to sit 140 let's over let's take out some of that plane change to go to like 195 and then the variable that we haven't used is uh, prograde so let's go down to ultra and that's getting us in pretty close 100 kilometers and that's starting to bottom out can we see the nope not yet all right so a little bit of fiddling back and forth and we'll have it so 1739 we're really close to that let's put this a bit further out into the future because we just need more time to set this up outward wrong way okay that's helping let's go to ultra so that was helping but now it's going the other direction so let's overshoot in the other direction a little bit to say 130 now change plane I think taking out change plane was helping but now this time adding in plane change seems to be helping to a point let's actually dial in the plane change to its lowest number which seems to be about right there and now we're going to check prograde again update every time we pass and we're getting low now we're getting there we're really close let's see if we can see it yet still not yet really okay but we're really close 24 kilometers so let's um, overshoot that a little bit in that direction so I think we have the plane change more or less dialed in so I think now it's outward and prograde that's the wrong way let me bring that down to the lowest number again so that's about here and let me look at plane change because I can see the white lines a bit off Okay, there we are, down to hyper. So it looks like around 10 kilometers we hit the low. How close do I have to be to see my encounter? Yeah, right around there is the low point for our plane change. So let's look at update every time we pass and prograde again, wrong way. All right, we're almost hitting it. Surely we can see it by now, finally. Okay, so... Let me go back for a moment. Encounter velocity is down to two, uh, 2k. And forward. This has us... We don't see a minimum altitude which means this plan currently has us slamming into Phobos which I'm fine with but just out of curiosity yeah let's go with this plan that has us driving right through the middle of Phobos I'm thinking. Alright, let's view the target. We're not super far away from the time to do the burn. The burn's only, well, it's 48, 49 meters a second. That's not Translation. completely unsubstantial. Again, I have no idea if this is in front of me or behind me, and we don't really have the time to figure it out, so let's just auto center. I do wish that Transex. The, the the color of this outer ring or perhaps the color of all the rings should, should change or maybe the X should change like the X should go red if it's behind you that would work then, then you know essentially you know you have to uh, pitch or yaw or yeah pitch or yaw almost backwards 
and then when the when the axis green that's then you know it's in front of you that would clarify things tremendously in my opinion feature request <laughs> what in the heck is this thing doing I don't have time warp on why is it being so ridiculous with this orientation we're not even going to get there on time all right cancel I, I don't know what it's doing. I think maybe because the maybe because I'm in the vanguard and it can't get it quite right. So Translation. I'm going to rotate manually until the X is where I want it to be, and then I'm just going to bump that date a bit forward. So currently, I'm just waiting to see this thing move out into this region, so that I have some idea of what orientation I need to be in, or it can be at one of these places. That's fine too. There we are. So now I know that the burn's in front of me. Um, now I think I have to translate, or I think I have to yaw left. I always get that backwards. So yawing this way a bit. And then we just have to pitch. Is it up or down? I think it's, I think, I don't know. I always get it backwards. No, I got it right that time. Uh. Okay, so we overshot the time to do the burn substantially. I don't think it matters. We're still a ways out. But let me see what happens now if I go... Let me not do auto center now. Let me actually get the time done first. So let's put the maneuver date out into the future. So we're at 1817. So... 18... 20 something let's go a little bit farther there that should be good and I don't that doesn't seem to have had really any impact so now if I go auto center I guess now it's close enough that it can figure it out but yeah, I think maybe the autopilot I think maybe auto center is tuned for the delta glider and the XR2 type vessel and this vessel is too heavy essentially or it could have be it could have been that the time I don't know so um, it doesn't really matter if we wait, but we'll go ahead and do the burn on time. And we'll, we'll need a little bit of main engine here. So we'll do the full blast of the main engine until that point Translation. and then translate. Okay. That's that. Turn this off. Go to view maneuver, and I think I want to go backwards, forwards. I don't know. There we are. Oh, I thought I thought it was completely off. I was like, what? Okay, so closest approach uh, showing five something kilometers, but if we go forward, it looks like we're more or less still driving through it. All right, where are we at? All right, well. That's another video. So let let me uh, control S to save, control P to pause, switch camera views. That, again, that took a bit longer than I wanted, but uh, you know I'm kind of figuring things out as I go here. But uh, hopefully all this makes sense to you if you're interested in this type of flight. I think, and, and certainly for my future self, I will be very glad that I have recorded all these parts when I when I try to do something like this again, especially like if I take a big break from orbiter, and it doesn't even have to be six uh, six years. In the past, when I would take, you know, again, I tend to record a lot. I tend to mess with the orbiter a lot over a short period. I'll record a lot of videos and then I'll upload them to YouTube and I'll schedule them. So currently, the date is uh, June 12th. I have currently orbiter videos scheduled all the way out into August. And by the time this one gets posted, it's probably going to be into September. So, what was my point? Um, there was a reason I was saying that now I can't remember but uh, at any rate <laughs> oh I, it was because um, the, the point that I was getting at is because so I tend to record a lot of videos during a short time and then I might not touch orbiter for a month or two or three and when I come back after even just two or three months and look at orbiter you know the wheels aren't exactly spinning like they were when I was really involved so I having all these parts in going back and being, being able to hear what my thought process was while I was doing things 
really helps my future self. And with that in mind, I hope it helps anybody else who might be trying to do something similar to what I'm doing here. All that said, leave a comment down below and I will see you in the next part.